Hi, uh, I'm here to demo my code for the ransack algorithm. So on the right, I have a setup ready to go for the original pair of images that we were given. Uh, and as I run this from scratch, as you can see, no cell outputs in either of these sheets, uh, I can help talk through what's going on in each of these steps. So uh, for the first few steps, I'll kind of do them both in parallel because uh, kind of simple to explain from that perspective. Uh, what's going on here is we're using the SIFT algorithm to go through the grayscale version of the image, uh, RGB to gray, uh, and compute key points. Uh, and that's what the SIFT detect and compute function does, is it gives us key points in a special structure where the, each of the key points have attributes like x, y in pixel space, size of the meaningful neighborhood, the orientation, et cetera. And the thought is to kind of take these SIFT key points and then go to the brute force, the BF matcher, uh, and essentially try to match key points from one of the images to the uh, to, to either. Uh, and as you can see, sort of running them both in parallel, the demo image comes up with slightly greater number of matches than the other one, but um, that should not be concerning at all. Both are pretty high from that perspective. As you can see, I've adjusted the calibrated coordinates. Uh, and what this step essentially does is takes in uncalibrated coordinates from the picture, the key points from the key point matching step uh, and converts them into calibrated. Then we come to the piece of estimating the essential matrix. Uh, so as you can see, this is what both their essential matrices look like. Uh, what this is essentially doing is uh, we are multiplying the two images, x1 and x2, uh, in a form where each column of x1 is multiplied with the transpose of x2. Uh, and what this gives us is by stacking them both together, taking the SVD, we end up with an estimate of the essential matrix. Now to come up with the best possible representation, we sort of repeat that process, taking the SVD of E, decomposing it back, uh, and then recomposing it to come up with the, the least squares estimate. So at the end of this step, we have essential uh, an estimate of the essential matrix. Now moving to the most interesting part of the code, which is the ransack estimator algorithm. Uh, What's going on here is based on the parameters of the number of iterations, which we've set to 20,000 and the sample size uh, and this threshold epsilon. Uh, we're essentially tw repeating a process 20,000 times of selecting sample points of size eight. So eight sample points are selected. Uh, we use those to generate the essential matrix. We then use that estimate of the essential matrix to generate in liars. Uh, and select the number of inliers based on uh, the epsilon threshold parameter that we've selected. So essentially what's going on here is using the E, we can use our test indices to find inliers. Inliers are determined by checking whether their residuals are lower than the specified epsilon. And we wanna maximize the number of inliers over all iterations, which is 20,000 by default. So now that both of them have finished running, we can see we end up with on the, uh, on this iteration, the number of inliers is 154 and 209 on the other one. So we want to make that number as large as possible. Then the next step of plotting the epipolar lines, and this gets us to the interesting part of uh, where were the cameras located essentially. Uh, so plot lines just uses the formula of an epipolar line to come up with its equation representation and then uses the pyplot class to go plot it. Uh, and then this line of plot epipolar lines essentially converts uncalibrated in liars to uh, we, we get those and then we go generate the corresponding epipolar lines to do that. This was also given to us. Uh, so the next interesting piece of code is the posed candidates using the essential matrix E uh, and how we're doing this is specified in the write up of generating four different posed candidates using different rotations and different translations. So using T, using negative T, uh, and then also uh, the special condition of if the determinant of the rotation matrix for that specific pose is less than zero, then we have to replace the last element on the main diagonal of RZ by the determinant of U times V. Uh, and in this case, U and V are results from the SVD of the essential matrix.
So by the end of this step, uh, what we've done is come up with four different possible poses that the camera could be in obtained using SVD. Uh, the last step, uh, the last few steps of reconstructing the 3D plot are perhaps the most rewarding because that's when we see how well the algorithm is done. Uh, as you can see on the demo image, it seems like the camera uh, poses are expected to be pretty close together uh, and just sort of more translated than rotated. Uh, and that matches this intuition of we can see most of the same features from, from both images. Uh, and this slight shift is just a result of translation. Whereas in the tractor case, uh, it's a bit of a sharper difference of rotation and translation. And that's also apparent uh, in this reconstruction plot. So now our last step of displaying three projections uh, what's going on in this step is for each calibrated point. So what was going on here to explain in more detail is we triangulate a lambda using a form uh, given in the on, on Piazza and in the slides as Q minus RP times mu lambda equals T. Uh, and we use that to solve for lambda. Uh, and then for the show reprojections, what's going on is also using uh, formula from slides to compute P1 and P2 projections, uh, essentially sort of given the two view geometry angle of the problem, uh, we see that for image two, uh, we have to apply, apply a translation and a rotation. Uh, wh whereas in image for P1, uh, it's missing the T times R the, at the R term, the rotation applied to the translation term. And that's a uh, result of the, the fact that uh, one of them is a forward transformation, one of them is a reverse transformation. As you can see on the results side of things, uh, there's a large amount of overlap between the blue and the red points, which is exactly what we wanted, uh, shows that our RANSEC is performing quite well. Whereas on the demo image, it's a bit tougher to find matches for this dead zone over here. Uh, which is essentially uh, corresponding to these points here related to the tree and things, but uh, this part of the image is kind of lost. So performs a little bit less accurately, but still overall pretty, uh, pretty good. Awesome. Thank you.